When we think of art, we think of its place in museums, galleries, and houses, but land art goes beyond that. Land art, six must-see artists. It was born on the principle that art and nature are inseparable. This movement aimed to connect art and life, moving away from museums and the financial circuit of galleries. Land art, also known as earth art, environmental art or earthworks, is an art movement that emerged in the 1960s and 1970s. As a trend, land art pushed the boundaries of art through the materials used and the placement of the works. The materials used tended to be those of the earth, such as soil, rocks, vegetation, wood and water, and the locations of the works tended to be away from population centers. In addition, almost all the works were ephemeral, this happened because they were in outdoor space and the natural elements such as wind, erosion and rain did their work and in the end, in many cases the works came to disappear, disintegrating in nature. The pioneers of this movement began to create their works with a critical view, as a means of protest against the trend of artificiality and commercialization of art, which shaped that period in the United States. Land Art Artists Robert Smithson was a prominent figure in the land art movement. He transitioned from painting to sculpture in the 1960s, aligning his work with minimalism. He created non-sites by collecting earth and rocks from specific areas and displaying them in galleries along with various materials like maps, bins, mirrors, glass, and neon. Spiral Jetty, constructed in 1970, is a 1,500-foot-long coil made of mud, salt crystals, and basalt rocks on the northeastern shore of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. It took six days and heavy machinery to transport 6,650 tons of materials into the lake. The sculpture was built twice, with Smithson altering its shape after initial construction. For years, it remained submerged, only visible from the air. However, a drought in the early 2000s caused the water level to drop, revealing Spiral Jetty to the public for an extended period. Nancy Holt Nancy Holt was a renowned American artist recognized for her contributions to public sculpture, installation art, and land art. She extended her artistic pursuits to various media, including film and photography, and authored books and articles on art. Sun Tunnels is composed of four massive concrete tunnels, each 18 feet long and 9 feet in diameter, arranged in a cross shape with a total length of 86 feet along each axis. These tunnels react uniquely to the sun, aligning with the sunrise, sunset, and the summer or winter solstice. Besides providing shelter from the desert sun, the tunnels create dazzling light effects within their interiors. Perforations on the tunnel tops represent constellations such as Draco, Perseus, Columba, and Capricorn, with varying hull sizes, corresponding to star magnitudes. Walter de Maria Walter de Maria was an artist who delved into the intricate relationship between relative and absolute concepts. He used geometric forms to create a series of repetitions in his sculptures, installations, and land works. Trained initially as a painter, he turned his art quickly towards sculpture with a practice at the intersection of minimal art, conceptual art, and land art. One of his most renowned land art creations is the Lightning Field, 1977, this expansive grid measures 1 mile by 1 kilometer and consists of 400 polished stainless steel poles, each standing over 20 feet tall. Each pole features a pointed tip that defines a horizontal plane, attracting lightning strikes. Visitors have the opportunity to walk inside the grid or observe it from a distance, leading to a unique physical and psychological experience. Ana Mandieta this Cuban feminist artist is known as one of the pioneers of the land art, especially for the manner the human body relates to and returns to nature. With a production of over 200 works, Mendieta used her body and the earth as a medium to create controversial sculptures. Her works are multi-layered and highly philosophical, relating to multiple art movements such as performance and body art, conceptualism and land art. Her most recognized project is her series of performance, photography, and video called Silhouetas. In this project, the artist modeled her body into different landscapes to show the indissoluble connection between the earth and human nature. Michael Heiser 
Well known for his capacity to build large-scale works and explore the relationship between positive and negative space, Michael Heiser has been a prominent figure of the land art movement since his 20s in the late 1960s. Through his monumental excavations and constructions, Heiser analyses scale and forms to build works evoking fear and awe at the same time capable of outlasting humanity. In 1972 Heiser started working on his most ambitious monument, a magnum opus called City. With an extension of almost two and a half kilometers and about 800 meters wide, this pharaonic project has taken 50 years to see the light of day. This land work is inspired by Native American traditions and ancient pre-Columbian ritual cities like Teotihuacan. To create this immense labyrinth of almost brutalist forms, Heiser used local materials. The clay, sand, and rocks of this sun-scorched nature were collected using methods that respect the flora and fauna. Agnes Deans Agnes Deans is a Hungarian-born American conceptual artist based in New York. She is known for works in a wide range of media, from poetry and philosophical writings, to complex diagrams rendered both by hand and by computer, sculpture, and international environmental installations. Her seminal work is considered to be Wheatfield, a confrontation. It was created during a four-month period in the spring and summer of 1982 when Deans, with the support of the Public Art Fund, planted a field of golden wheat near Wall Street in Lower Manhattan. 200 truckloads of dirt were brought in and 285 furrows cleared of rocks and garbage and dug by hand. The seeds hand sown and the furrows covered with soil. The field was maintained for four months, weeded, fertilized, sprayed, and an irrigation system set up. The crop was harvested on August 16, 1982, when it yielded over 1,000 pounds of healthy, golden wheat. In this era of the Anthropocene, it is land art that can perhaps best help us contemplate our complicated relationship with nature. What is the right way to live here on Earth? How do time and nature affect art? How do time and nature affect all of us? Don't forget to subscribe.